Hello, everybody, and welcome. Who is excited to be alive and existing? Yeah. Okay, just a quick reminder to all the performers, even when you're up here, you still have to wear your mask. So maybe you want to cheer, maybe you don't. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, so first up we have Caitlin performing musical comedy. Let's welcome her to the stage. This might be loud. <laughs> okay. of many guitar performances tonight. <laughs> but this will be my first time playing guitar in front of actual people. So that's fun. Um, what would you guys do if I just played Wonderwall for the next 10 minutes? <laughs> to but <laughs> stay tuned for next month you never know <laughs> so i actually wrote this song specifically for tonight and so musical comedy is kind of an overstatement we're gonna call it music <laughs> Nobody, damn. <laughs> okay, no, we're not judging. That would be pretty bold. I mean, like, for a first date. I think you'd be better off, like, taking your flex dine to Panda Express. Do you guys want to split some orange chicken? Oh. <laughs> jokes about your hometown and you're like trying really hard to avoid eye contact and then they say your name from the stage I'm not speaking from personal experience but just know that I did not pay to be there <laughs> that was free <laughs> I'm not saying people don't have talent I usually walk out impressed But we all know that you're silently judging us So well that might cause some of us stress I just want to remind all my fellow performers That we didn't pay to be here We get to do this for free We get to make them listen to us And it's cheaper than therapy that's not even a joke. <laughs> I was here last month and all the songs were like, I think my trauma started when my dad made me define my sexuality. Like, no joke. <laughs> but they were really good. <laughs> oh God, speaking of trauma. <gasps> you guys. <laughs> Hold on, I got it. Anybody? <laughs> Don't worry about it. We're moving on. The joke's dead, everyone. <laughs> um, but now that I'm like really thinking about it, I know it feels like we didn't pay to be here, but I think we kind of paid $30,000 a year to be here. Ew. <laughs> 
So maybe this wasn't free at all. Maybe this was actually really expensive. One would say a ridiculous amount of expensive. I don't know, just. <laughs> so like, we all paid to be here. We all paid a $250 stadium fee to be here. Why is that on there? <laughs> All of that money comes right out of our pockets and directly into the university landscaping budget. Like, I'm not even kidding. <laughs> I have two Zoom classes because my teachers can't pay rent here, but the grass in the mall is always super green and super soft. <laughs> so like, maybe it was worth it, I don't know. <laughs> But I don't know, I kind of like to block out the thought that I will be wallowing in debt for the next 10 years. So, we didn't pay to be here. We might have paid to be here. Ow. <laughs> but we can go home and proudly say that we spent our Thursday in a dark basement with a bunch of band kids. <laughs> and it was free. <laughs> cool. Thank you. I can't wait to call my mom and tell her about this. <laughs> I think that was hilarious. Another round of applause for Caitlin, everybody. Come on. Next up, we have another guitar player, Nikhil. Welcome, Nikhil, to the stage. Which mic is it? This one? How's that sound? Everybody hear me? I asked for two. I don't know how to set up this microphone. I want like one on the guitar. Thank you. Anyway, how's everybody doing tonight? Good? Good? Cool. Midterms are completely destroying me, but I'm glad that everybody's kind of here just hanging out. for this one. So I'll be playing cover and we'll see if I have enough time for an original. But you guys know Coldplay? Big Coldplay fans? I'm going to play Yellow. Yeah. But not the way I think you're thinking.
for another song. What? Yeah? And we're tuning to a whole different thing. Also, if the string snaps, I'm going to walk off the stage and, you, and I'll see the next song next month. <laughs>
your face it dances and it haunts me laughter ringing in my ears I still find pieces of your presence here even even after all these years And I don't want you thinking I still get asked to dinner Cause I'd like to say That I sometimes don't And if I soon Touch of love. I just don't think I'll ever get over you. And if I lived till I was one hundred and two, I just don't think I'll ever. Get over you. That's all. If you want to hear more of my music, I'm on Spotify, Nikhil Kumaran, N-I-K-H-I-L-K-U-M-A-R-A-N. That was very beautiful. I'm trying to grade papers, but I was about to cry, so. <laughs> well, all right, let's keep it up for our next performer, James Noes. Just Jame, who's singing and playing guitar. Woo! Uh, this is for you and all the performers. You guys can take a couple extra minutes if you want as well. There's some open slots, so. Hi, my name is Jame Moore, and I'm an independent artist, and uh, this is going to be my first time performing post-COVID. Um, I have three songs lined up, uh, two are originals, and one is a cover. Um, the first one I'm going to be playing today is called Tides. It's more so a demo. The 
reach for my hand cause the tides are high it's out to see you feel alone no way to home or be a guide you're terrified of the evil man who stole your heart and let you bleed young and naive you could have used a friend if i shall speak you stem from the deep blue sea wash off your sins and pain from yesterday don't light the fuse till the moment comes slow and steady wins the race it won't delay your beating drum Bite down your tongue, cause you're scared to lose Don't know a damn thing on how to love But you try because the feeling there's enough If I may speak This path was meant to be As you descend I hope you feel And then uh, for my next song, it's called In Time. Um, I wrote the song back in April, but then stopped um, practicing because I was applying for my full-time job. So uh, it's gonna be a bit rusty, but we'll see where it goes. Inside your mind, with several things, with pretty girls, get all the guys, but left alone in a bubble floating by with where we are with you. Ooh. Stuck in the clouds with no one else, you cry for help to no avail on being found. You're losing hope, cause you got no remedy, but what I see, life's not blue. Not your fault, you don't believe at all. But in time, you'll find him too. You're missing peace as sorrow sees. Then love won't leave. Cause go, you're quite the view. Rough from your home, and no one knows how much the emptiness conceals the light inside. Got a blanket over you, what's there to do but grief? At dead of night, you seek a man who's just a friend, and jealousy is what you'll find. No, he's the guy with the girl you wish to be wholeheartedly. Life's not fair. Not your fault, you don't believe at all. But in time, you'll find him too. You're missing peace as sorrow sees. Then love won't leave. Cause go, you're quiet. take one sip of the water. <laughs> Um, 
this next song is going to be a cover, and it's called uh, Feeling Good by Nina Simone. Birds flying high, you know how I feel. Sun in the sky, you know how I feel. Breeze drifting on by, you know how I feel. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life for me. And I'm feeling good. Fish in the sea, you know how I feel. River running free. You know how I feel Blossom on a tree You know how I feel It's a new dawn, it's a new day It's a new life for me And I'm feeling good Dragonflies out in the sun you know what I mean, don't you know? Butterflies are having fun. You know what I mean. Sleep in peace when day is done. That's what I mean. In this old world, there's a new world and a both world for me. And I'm feeling Shine. You know how I feel, don't you know? Sand of the pine, you know what I mean. Oh, freedom is mine, and I know how I feel. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life, it's a new life for me. That was incredible. All these, yeah, really. Watching all these talented musicians makes me feel pretty good as an audience member, but pretty worthless as a human being. So on that note, let's give it up for Lauren, who is going to be performing a, t a poem t uh, titled, Untitled, I'll Make Your, make a, excuse me, let's start that over. A poem titled, Untitled, parentheses, I'll make a home in your gut. Warm welcome for Lauren. Before I start, has anyone been to a spoken word performance ever before? Okay, you know how to act during a poetry performance. For those of you who don't, just give me some snaps, some foot taps, some oohs, yes, if I say anything you really like, because poets thrive off of audience. I thought I knew what love was before I met you. In seventh grade, two things were on my mind, anime boys and leaving the seventh grade. Because of this, my vision was blurred. Seeing love as a tall blonde man, pointed chin, dark and mysterious, let loved puppies and baking. Love would get into flower fights with me when we made cakes together. 
Love in seventh grade was daydreaming, reading fan fiction, because I never experienced love outside the neon orange UI of Wattpad. <laughs> and I knew I would recognize love when I finally met it, because I knew so much about the love from the fan fictions I read, but when you finally arrived, you were nothing like I thought. You were all ugly laugh, wearing the same clothes for a week straight, sadness, but still persevering, and you opened your arms wide. I am not one to love easily. I am not one to know love easily, but when you guessed what my favorite flower was first try, I believed in love in that moment. Addendum, I didn't have a favorite flower until you guessed allum allium. You were so excited, a child's delight. I haven't seen alliums the same since. To say I fell, well, that would be a lie. I did not fall a little nor stumble into your arms. I crashed and shattered and sank deeply into the green muck. And because you are the same, you are stupid, and I am your impulse control, you joined me, eternally preserved within each other's arms, like a pair of bog bodies, sat at rest at the bottom, encased in moss on the gravel bottom, my brain darkening, but keeping you within my mind always. We are drowned, but it does not hurt. Bodies in the bog weighed stone like statues. That we are, though not beautiful, no Michelangelo, no Michelangelo, and we are not Pygmalion, we are ugly. All double chins and crooked teeth, bald spot, bowed feet. But when they see us beneath the water, pull us from our tough grave, they will mutter how beautiful, because love eternal like us is always beautiful. And when they uncover our bodies, they will say, leave them. Unspoken sentiment, do not separate them. That was uh, very quick and powerful, so some snaps there. Mm. Yes. Uh, next up, we have Daniel with a guitar loop. All right, give me one second. I got it. I'm good. Coming through. Okay. Um, yeah, my name is Daniel. Um, I'm just going to be doing some of the compositions that I've created. It's just going to be music. I hope you enjoy it. Um, I'll be using some of these pedals right here. There's some really cool pedals that kind of just gives effects to the guitar. For instance, this red one right here. If I play a chord, it'll loop it over and over, and then I can add like other like layers to it or whatever. The one downside to that is if I mess up something also going to loop over and over, so we're going to hopefully not do that, but um, yeah, I hope you enjoy.
best idea.
Let's get another round of applause! You know what I'm saying? Okay. Uh, next up, today has been a little bit somber, a lot of nice, relaxing, incredible music. But next up, we've got a stand-up comedian. So how about we get a little riled up? Let's, woo! Yeah! So welcome to the stage, Preston! Woo! So, how are we doing tonight? All right, let's just dive into it. Airplanes, you ever been on one? Yeah, yeah, yeah they're pretty cool, right? My God, they are also so scary. It, it is honestly an engineering marvel and a, a miracle from God that those things don't uh, snap in half 98% of the time up there, you know? But it's always that 2% that lingers in my head. So, you know, I've been getting so scared of going on planes nowadays that uh, I have to just tell myself, I have to plant the seed in my head that basically says, all right, Preston, there hasn't been a major plane accident in eight years where everyone has died in a horrific death. And that is going to change today. <laughs> It's always that 2%. <laughs> but enough about planes, scary deaths in midair where you can't do anything. Let's talk about economics. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be frank. I don't understand much about economics, but there is one topic that really pisses me off, and that's inflation. I, you know, I've, I've been in two classes, have seen three videos, and I still don't understand how uh, hyperinflation works. Like, why can't I just print more money to solve our debt problems? I mean, I mean, like, it's your money. You know, you decide the value. And, and if it's such a problem, why don't they just print it in secret and have some, like, FBI guys go out and be like, here's a 20, drop it on the floor. And then somebody picks up, hey, a 20. They don't think of it as inflation. They think of it as pocket change. And uh, it's, it's an also another funny thing. Uh, apparently, inflation is the reason why uh, over in like Asia, a lot of Asian countries, like uh, their one dollar is actually like a hundred, you know, either yen or uh, in Vietnamese dong. I think that's what it's called. Uh, I, I always thought that was just a stylistic choice just to make their money look cooler. <laughs> like, you know, why have a one when you can have an a hundred? <laughs> Ah, but enough about economics. That's boring. That's, that's money and money going up, money going down. It's a sad, sad cycle. How about we talk about something cool like VR headsets? You ever try one of those? Aren't they the coolest thing ever? <laughs> well, a lot of you are probably lying to yourselves because those things, every one I've tried, have been terrible. Uh, I, I don't know what those people over there tested the VR headsets on, probably monkeys, but um, they're sure not made for uh, human heads, that's for sure. Uh, where do I begin with these? Oh, yeah, yeah, so the wise guys over at VR Incorporated uh, thought that, uh, you know, since your head is going to be the holding the VR headset up, they should make the strip band holding it together as uncomfortable as possible and make it so it feels like it's constantly crushing your skull. And then they decided within the headset itself to have these lenses that are, are blurry until you reach like that one point where now the, the headset is now crushing your face and the strap is somehow crushing your skull even more. Oh, and now that you've got it all synchronized, here's where the metagame begins. It becomes an endurance test. 
It becomes an endurance test to see how long you can play that thing until the headache growing in your head becomes so unbearable that you need to throw the headset off before you vomit. My record is seven minutes. How about you guys? And uh, it's really funny because I actually read an article recently that uh, said that those uh, VR headsets might be causing a little uh, brain damage here and there when you wear them for too long. So uh, now pretty much those things are just glorified $400 suicide machines that you can play virtual boxing on. I think, uh, you know, the saddest part about this VR technology is that when I was able to try it, not even VR porn could change my mind. When the pinnacle of audio, visual, media could not change my opinion on this piece of crap technology, that's when you know you've screwed up. Enough about VR. Let's talk about Wikipedia. Yeah. <laughs> Wikipedia. Hell yeah. I've just been doing a lot of random research on that. Uh, one of my favorite things is looking to like, pre like scams and schemes over the years. Like, uh, you know, Ponzi schemes, uh, pyramid schemes, uh, Nigerian email scams, the I love you scam. And uh, there's this one uh, very interesting scam that I found that uh, a lot of people actually seem to know about, but uh, nobody really does anything about. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of them. They're called the Ben and Jerry's Corporation. <laughs> I mean, uh, and, and, and a couple of you might be saying, oh, oh, but they're, they're fair trade. They're, they're good to the farmers. They're, they're, they're better. Uh, well, let me get something straight. I don't eat ice cream to make others feel good. I eat ice cream to make myself feel good. <laughs> but in all honesty, uh, th these guys are taking a small, uh, average tasting ice cream, uh, putting it in smaller pints, and then selling it for the same price as a regular uh, carton of ice cream. <laughs> and uh, what's really confusing is that sometimes they're being sold side by side. So... Uh, <laughs> I don't know what their marketing strategy is there. You know what? I, th I know I think carries their corporation or brand. It's just that little Vermont label, you know? Like that label convinces you that this ice cream comes from like some fantastical land where the wild Bernie Sanders runs free. I mean, imagine if this ice cream came from any other state like uh, Florida or Utah. Or, or fucking Arkansas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's the same quality ice cream, except now instead of being produced in a magical forest, it was uh, produced next to a used car dealership in a church. <laughs> yeah, it's honestly crazy how uh, that, one, that one little label, saying your ice cream comes from Vermont, can uh, change public opinion from being a scam into a legitimate business. But now enough about Ben and Jerry's. I'm pretty sure they're fine guys. I, I don't know. They, I don't know. Are they even alive anymore? Aw, oh, tragic. <laughs> Let's talk about TV. Commercials. Have you been seeing a lot of commercials recently? <laughs> sort of. <laughs> well, there's this one that's uh, been on my mind a lot. It's a, it's a Domino's commercial, and it features uh, one of their old mascots, the Noid. Have you, have you, have you seen this one? <laughs> now, uh, each time I a see this commercial, I always just got to ask myself, I always end up asking myself, what is a Noid? <laughs> like, he's this 50-year-old looking man in a red rabbit jumpsuit who likes destroying pizzas? What? Like, what, what was the marketing 
team behind this thinking like, okay, so uh, McDonald's, they have a clown selling burgers. That's a real occupation. Uh, Burger King, they got a king selling burgers. That's an authority figure. But what can we do for our, our, our brand? Like a pizza king? A talking pizza? A pizza man? No. I got the perfect idea. Pizza destroyer. Oh, what does a pizza destroyer look like? I'll tell you. It looks like a middle-aged man who's a furry on a budget. <laughs> I think the craziest part about the Noid is that they actually had to get rid of him for a really serious reason back in the 80s. So, uh, like, back then, uh, there was this guy named Kenneth Lamar Noid who, uh, thought the commercials were making fun of him. So like any, any American who was mad, he went down to his local Domino's and took two employees hostage for five hours. <laughs> and then I think somewhere he became a famous rapper, but that's not important. Uh, but um, you know, that's crazy that they're letting an ex a, motive, a motive for a hostage situation be on TV. Like, that'd be like if uh, Jared, they made Subway did like a, a campaign where it's just like, hey, look how much weight Jared's been losing in prison. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? That's just so funny that he's an emotive for a hostage situation, but nobody cares. Nobody cares. Nobody cared that they brought him back. Nobody probably cared that they got rid of him. Most people probably don't know why they had to get rid of him. And that is probably the biggest marketing failure of all time. You know, say what you will about Ronald McDonald, the Burger King, that creepy star from Hardee's. Uh, you have an opinion on him, but the Noid, you just don't care to have an opinion for him. And that is just a failure. So to whoever made the Noid, wherever you are, alive or dead, uh, just know there's probably a special place in hell waiting for you. All right, that's my bit. Thank you. <laughs> Almost had a collision there. Uh, well, I'm going to plug something really quick. If you like comedy, yeah, tomorrow, MinProv, Min University of Minnesota's short form improv team has a show at 10th Church Street, which is the old Bell Museum. So uh, starts at 7, come check that out if you feel inclined. And we have one last performer tonight. So let's give it up for Plenty G! Take this off. Probably be better. Okay. Uh, how y'all doing? Good. That's good. That's good. Uh, who do I send my music to? You back there? Yeah. Would y'all got like a? Oh, okay. Cool. You know, I'm, I'm new here, man. Work with me. You know. <laughs> how this going? Feel y'all like a high score? <laughs> working with me. Appreciate you. Man, that's a long way down, ain't it? <laughs> but you had a thirst for oh, Dang, we taking up time anyway, huh? I apologize, John. Y'all want to get home? I want to get home too, ain't it? <laughs> oh, she just left? Oh, she just left? Oh, okay, well, I'm an R&B artist. I also do some hip-hop because, you know, I like to dab in the arts. You feel me? Um, but, yeah, uh, I don't know what's going on right now, but you could 
you know, look me up on Spotify. Yeah. Uh, under Plenty G, P L three N T Y, capital G. The word Plenty with a three. Okay. There you go. You know, easy way to put it out there. I got some big uh, guitar jacks. I don't want to do that. We good? First let me say I apologize If I did you wrong and I let you play I didn't know, didn't think that I Was gonna need you in my life And I wanna know just how you feel Cause I don't wanna hurt you, baby And I wanna know if you hear me out Cause what I say might sound crazy Baby, I'm wrong I'll get it right next time I'll get it right next time i get it right next time Girl, I'll apologize, yeah I'll get it right next time I'll get it right next time I'll get it right next time Girl, I'll apologize, baby Every night, it's the same old dream I see you running right, away with me But it ain't real, just a memory Can't seem to get you away from me And I want to know yeah. just how you feel yeah. Cause I don't want to hurt you, baby ooh, ooh. And I want to know if you hear me out yeah. Cause what I say now I'm with me. Baby, I'll get it right next time. I'll get it right next time. I'll get it right next time. Girl, apologize. Yeah. i get it right next time. I'll get it right next time. I'll get it right next time. Girl, apologize. I'll get it right next time. I'll get it right next time. I'll get it right next time. Girl, apologize. I'll get it right next time. I'll get it right next time. Girl, I apologize, baby. And I want to know just how you feel. Cause I don't want to hurt you, baby. And I want to know if you hear me out. Cause what I say might sound crazy. Baby, I'm wrong. I'll get it right next time. I'll get it right next time. I'll get it right next time. Girl, I apologize. Yeah. I'll get it right next time. I'll get it right next time. I'll get it right next time. Girl, I apologize. I'll get it right next time. I'll get it right next time. I'll get it right next time. Girl, I apologize. I'll get it right next time. I'll get it right next time. I'll get it right next time. Girl, I apologize.
But uh, like I said, y'all can find me on Spotify, uh, TikTok, all that, all the fun stuff y'all be on. I be on it too. So uh, appreciate y'all. Y'all have a good night. Enjoy the rest of y'all evening. Got to go save some kids. All right. Hey, yeah. And that concludes a lovely, lovely night. Oh, wait, but don't go yet. Don't go yet. I want to let you all know that this happens the third Thursday of every single month. So let's give it a round of applause for our performers one last time. Woo! Have a great week. Thank you. Good luck on exams, life, relationships. Tell your mom you love her. Don't forget about your dad. Good night.